what's up everybody i just came from the car wash now just before shooting this review because you know we need to keep the cars clean so while i was at the car wash uh, a gentleman in a bmw x3 came he asked to see the territory because he is planning to change cars once his uh, lease deal on the x3 you know goes away and he was considering the territory or he's still considering it and it didn't click my mind to ever compare this car to you know a car of extra's magnitude and he said would you recommend that i get the territory over the new facelift x3 and it had not clicked my mind to compare this car to like german suvs of the same size and same category you know because we plenty buyers because of how saturated the SUV market is we mostly just say yeah you know this is coming in to beat the Chinese rivals and we sideline the German rivals because we like you know this is built in China by the way and then it's like okay so manufacturers are also just building their cars in China to, to come and beat the Chinese manufacturers and we couldn't be more wrong so now I have it in my mind that this car is actually a competitor to the BMW X3 It's a competitor to whatever Mercedes has of the same class and same size So that's my mind now and that's my confidence levels moving forward That I'm in a car that rivals the BMW X3 Let's talk about it Now that we have the confidence of competing with German cars Let's look at the outside and see just how it compares part to part with any of its peers in the same segment you have this trendish design where they put fog lights and daytime running lights at the top and then they put the headlights just there uh, in the middle of the bumper this is a design we have seen from the likes of i think the duke if i'm not mistaken and all those other ones i think it looks very nice looks very looks clean um, and then they also have a silver or chromish stripe that's running from the daytime running lights all the way to the other side and it connects beautifully especially with this panther black color it looks very moy and also when you're looking at the grill you have it where you would mostly find it on Ford cars which is right at the top of the grill this looks nice as well I like what they have here with the designs and this is what mostly makes people compare this car to the cherries and the Havals. I think it's that grill if the grill was any different, there would probably not be any comparisons being made between this and the cherries. Otherwise, we move. They also house that radar sensor there. Radar or LiDAR, not sure. But they house it there. And funny enough, on this car, you don't get the features that's supposed to come with having that sensor there. I think they could have removed it uh, because it almost gives you a false hope that you know this car has adaptive cruise control and all of those features whereas it doesn't it's only the titanium which is the model above this one that has those so maybe they could have removed that but otherwise i'm happy with the exterior of this car it looks very beautiful it just needs to you know take some getting used to to say that this is what a ford territory looks like you also get this 18 inch rims which you find on the trend model um they come in silver you cannot change them so for any color that you go with these are the rims you're gonna find they are a nice design i just wish there were another color um uh, maybe gunmetal or something would have looked far better but this looks okay it matches up with the chrome that they have on the sides and also the by the, the bottom of the door it's also a bit chrome so the chrome does go all around and it looks but nice even the roof rails they have there they also a bit of chrome at the back which is something that i just noticed now actually you have this raised spoiler so it comes just around there and it edges out it looks very nice even here you know the edges it comes out like it's it's almost like it's an aftermarket spoiler which looks very nice what i love about this car is that the design language continues to the back and it still looks very good you know there are some of those cars which look good at the front but bad at the back or they look bad at the front and then look good at the back this one looks good 
at the front and the back it's a very nice design that continues to make sense even at the back so when you come here there's not much you know we don't have we don't do fake exhausts here although there's a bit of a diffuser thing going on here even the lights themselves they continue with the designs similar to the fronts where they have you know this stripe thing going on um, there it continues even at the back there's not much to point out uh, everything is you no know, fairly simple but very elegantly done and this is the key by the way i don't think i've showed the key it's not like the normal ford keys um but just to show you the tailgate because this one is electronic on the trend and also on the titanium just you hold it yep you hold it and then it opens it there another good thing with the car besides the boot space you get a spare wheel uh which is nice you also get it with again there's some formoco logos going on there and you get it with bolts which is surprising to see but it's nice I'm not complaining and to close it it's the normal route you just press on there and it's gonna close it but look i'm a fairly young guy 25 years of age i don't have a family um i'm not in a position where i would need an suv or i would be eyeing out an suv but this car looks very good um i've been living with it obviously and you know i like the looks of it i can't complain about the exterior maybe only the rims the color only uh, at that the design is fine but maybe the color could be different I don't have the eye of someone who'd be looking for this type of car but i'm happy with the design on the exterior it looks elegant this is something i would pull up with um so it is a bit tough for me to be explaining too much about this car when i don't have an eye for it but at the end of the day i have to relay my experiences and this is just me being honest i like it let's hop onto the interior now I'm gonna start at the back because I'm assuming people looking at this car want to know about the space and everything. So at the back, you do get this nice soft touch leather. They have some nice design to them. You know, you get these grids that you have over here. Looks a bit spotty. And you can also split the seats. That's gonna destroy my box that I have there. But you can split the seats and it's gonna give you more space. They obviously go all the way. But because of that car cleaning kit that I have there, I can't pull it all the way. In the center you have that day in case you know you have some majita sundays going on and that's it like you do have very good amount of good space here at the back this is almost the same as the driving position that i have on that side so you can see this is very good space and i can do that chillax and while chillaxing you can pop that no majita sundays something because i'm young i'm gonna have the gents at the back and maybe they might be drinking because i want i'll, I'll be driving so there's that and you also get a usb-c and some climate you know vents over there for your pleasure the doors do have some awesome design which almost looks like it's bearing a speaker somewhere but the speaker is actually there and here at the bottom i don't like the space that you get here it's a bit small it does it for like your red bulls and your normal cokes but anything bigger than that you're gonna struggle and passengers get their lights in very interesting positions so it's here this is actually the first time that i see it since i've been driving this car i just noticed now that it's there otherwise i was not going to report it but it's there you know you click on it you also get some nice visibility from those rear mirrors this car actually sits high hey and when you have it with the doors open you can see just how much space they're covering there that you're not seeing when the car is no, when the doors are closed but look at that it sits fairly high the front doors also get a similar design to the back ones you know where you have the space there you have your controls there and your handles there which are very nice actually and when you close this thing it's nicely insulated like you don't hear anything outside and then let's talk tech because this car is full of tech to a point where you have tech replacing buttons you will notice that this is a very similar design to what the chinese cars have you have a very big screen which you now continues from the radio side of things to the digital cluster side of things it looks like a very neat design 
up until you have to have buttons for certain things and there's no buttons for those certain things the only buttons you get in this car are the ones on the steering wheel the ones on your driver's controllers there and the ones in the middle here you have buttons to go back home on your radio menu this is for the volume knob and to also switch on the infotainment and off um to go to music to go back for your calls this is for your handbrake which is electronic um, automatic stop start and you get this rotary gear selector which looks it's very interesting if you don't confuse it for the volume knob now let's switch it on and explore the radio that's it being on there it looks very nice let me switch on the icon which you do by clicking these haptic buttons they i can't complain about these ones they work they work just fine and i love that you have the hazards one over here which you know you click and then it does the things it's very nice so you get your typical stuff buried in the infotainment system but you also get aircon controls which are buried in the as well so let's say for example i was on not carplay because i can't go there i'm using my phone by the way to record this so let's say i was somewhere else and i wanted to turn down you know the temperature or take it up I first have to pretend as if I want to, you know, increase my aircon thing or decrease it, which is now going to show me the menu. I love that the menu is fast, but I don't want to have to go through here because you see it was one, but now it's two. But that's the only way that I can trigger it. I can even increase it from there, decrease it. Um, but that's for the passenger. That's for me i just love how quick this infotainment is like i just click on things and they go where they need to go in a very quick way um you know click that click that click that it's it's quick i can't complain about this thing you know even have your equalizers there you can set which speaker should have you know the most volume it's very nice and you get these nice events with this slick design which continues all the way towards the driver's side even the middle ones and some space on there speaking of space so you do have this tiny bit here maybe you can put your phone or something you have this glove box um it is not too deep but you know you can put some stuff in there and you also have the center console one you know open it you get some deep storage in there and you have this thing for some car guard coins you can put them in there for your drinks you have the space over here and i love that you know you can you can close it like so and if you're gonna open it look at how fancy this thing is it's fancy and you can also drop that and have you no know, more space and if you need a place to put your phone you can put it in there which has wireless charging as well and the material here is going to keep your phone from moving around you can put two phones in there if you don't care much about you know charging it uh but otherwise you know you can just lay your phone and it's going to be held by these grooves they have on here and you also get some space on the doors where you can put some coins or anything that you will need to have access to quickly and also your doors doesn't have too much space but stay there as well and what i find a bit odd is that there seems to be you know some space for something here but we don't have it uh maybe they took it out maybe it's on the titanium i don't know and you also get more storage there just underneath you know this whole center console thing there's more storage for whatever you may need to put can put books there even like it's it's a very huge space okay let me switch on the digital cluster by just turning on the car ah that's some cool animation there okay so i reset my kilometers and everything uh, because i wanted to give you an accurate figure but i have not gotten to that as yet so this is just with the car on in accessory mode you know you get what you get there and for you to toggle this menu you know the chip computer menu you first have to click on this button and then there you have to press this and it's going to move between let's say audio controls which then this would be for the volume or you click it again and then it's for the settings which you can now just move through the trip computers and everything else that's on the menu that's a bit of a weird design um wish maybe there would have been a better way for this to be done especially seeing that you already have a volume knob in the center console so you don't need to be moving the volume there as well but it's there it's there to make things easy i guess but i would have preferred to you know just have 
one button do one thing and you can also control your lights using these uh this is very nice you, know, you can just switch on there as you're going and also for these other lights you can do that and it switches in between them too to indicate that's what you use right yeah and to indicate that's what you use so it's a very nice it, it feels nice the quality is amazing on here i have a thing for this flat bottom steering wheel as well it feels very nice to drive um it is a bit slim as well so when you're holding it like you're really just you know gripping onto it when you turn it when you turn it it feels soft as well i love it i'm in love with it this bit of chrome is a nice design yeah when you're moving it like it it feels very soft it's very nimble and there's an interesting button here on the steering wheel it's this favorite button which is currently set to make the audio on and off basically mode the audio but you can set it to direct you to any menu that you want on the infotainment screen because things are mostly in there so let's say for your air conditioning you wanted to have it set to this button there is a way to do it or if you wanted to have your sports mode which you would have to find in here and select the if you wanted to have that menu a bit um shorter to get to you just have to set this button to redirect you to that which is a nice design um i love it they have it i think it would also be nice if they had more of them but i think these other ones are filled under titanium because these are what we call poverty buttons so it means we're lacking some few options here and let's quickly move up a bit so you get this nice finish here continues with piano black styling that you get in the car click on that those activate they're very bright uh, even at night and you also get a sunglasses holder or whatever you want to put in there the roof lining is white uh i love that it's white because everything else in the car is very black and then you do need something to reflect some bit of light i'm not a fan of it but i like that you know it's white and you can still have some light reflecting around the car because if everything else was black and you don't even have a moonroof on those trend it's only found in the titanium i don't think you would like you know the darkness much in this car but that's nice what's a bit weird though is that that's you know that's very dated that's a very dated light but then the other ones the disparity is weird now let's talk about the drive i think we have we have explored the car enough on the inside and the outside we now need to drive it the brakes reach out to the yeah now you're going to get a true figure for the fuel consumption because i'm actually going to be heading somewhere while i film this review and i'm going to move it to normal i'm not going to try and save fuel i'm not going to try and spend fuel i'm just going to have it normal and see how the drive is like yeah so this car is powered by a 1.8 litre four cylinder turbocharged engine petrol engine at that you know it's not the normal way of having SUVs paired with um, diesel up until those other SUVs started putting petrol engines in the SUVs and people were seeing crazy crazy fuel consumption because you know it's not the norm to have petrol engines in SUVs so with this one having it it was also a bit of a you know, skepticism to say why would ford put an ecoboost engine um in an suv so they've done it and they claim that this car is supposed to do around 6.4 liters to the 100 i'm currently averaging 7.9 and i reckon it was gonna go lower i'm in you no know, in town i'm driving through town i'm not on the highways or anything so if I was on the highways, it would probably go lower, but it's currently 7.9 with my intern driving. But fuel consumption aside, how does it actually drive? So this car is quite smooth. I'm on a bumpy road at the moment, and the suspension does quite dampen the bumps that you have on the roads. It's fairly comfortable. I drove it to Nampo, uh, which is, was a three hour drive to and back. So that's around six hours of driving and it felt comfortable you know it's a fairly comfortable car to drive the speed and the power is there whenever you need to overtake uh, any vehicle that's on the road it gets up to speed pretty quickly so it is a four cylinder engine paired with a seven speed dual clutch transmission which is not lazy at all it's actually quite smooth with changing the gears uh, you don't feel it that it's changing gears but it is changing gears it's not clanky it's a good combination to have in this car whenever i step on the throttle that's here it's 
moving. Part of a take a fortune now. Nice. But all that stepping on the throttle increases your fuel consumption. So you don't want to be doing a lot of that. But the power is there whenever you need to overtake. Um, and whenever you need to you know, get from the off ramp to highway speeds. It's there. It does not feel underpowered at all. The engine may be roaring sometimes. But you know the power is there. It's delivering the power. And once you're done with all of that. You get back to a very comfortable drive. Where the only noise you're hearing. Is maybe some of the road noise. Which is there not too bad though but it's there and you also maybe hear some bit of wind which is also not too much so when coming back from Nampu I was very happy with the drive no there was no point where I wanted to say hey this car should go away I don't like how it drives the visibility out of the you know, the screen is amazing as well it's so roomy um, that you could pack a family and go on a vacation trip with this car and you would not be looking forward to getting out of it well unless you're tired which you will definitely be an suv this is a good option it's very roomy you know it's also future proof in the sense that whenever you get your kids you know you're still gonna have space you won't need to upgrade and what i also love about this there is an option of the puma which is less big um, and then it's more stylish in a sense it's more youthful however this one is cheaper than the puma st line where you get two territory cars that are cheaper than the st line the st line puma is around 680 and then you get the you know the starting of this car which is the ambiente which is around five something and then you get this one which is 600, 626 thousand rands and already you get more room with this one um you still get almost the same comfort levels you know it's spacious it's speed it has speed it has everything a youthful person would want in a car right the design is different you know the puma is fairly more stylish but this one is not horrible it's not a horrible looking car it's beautiful it blends in it fits in and you can drive it normal day to day it's not like the you know the buckies which i would not drive a buggy day to day um, if i had the option but this is a very good car it's a very good big car to be in as a youthful person only thing i don't like or something you might not like as well the sound system is horrible to be honest um, it's not the best sound system that i've heard in any ford car i've been in the puma i've been in the Everest that are that have the normal sound system and it was banging this one I would even buy a JBL speaker and put it in this car and not use the sound system at all because it's not horrible and it's not a thing of you get what you pay for because you get a lot of value in this car and it's not cheapskate value like it's very good value but the sound system I would have preferred if they take they took the one from the ranges and they just put it in here what's that oh it's a bike but yeah i would have preferred the sound, the sound system to be a bit different because this one is not all that good um it's it is a transmission <laughs> it's not a transmission in the sense that you would want to not buy the car at all but come on man it could have been better it could have been better that's the only thing i can complain about the sound system everything else ah this car is good the quality of the materials are good um the drive the engine is good the gearbox combination is good the power is there the fuel efficiency is um it's okay it depends on how you drive it's a petrol car so if you put your foot to the metal what 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 it's gonna give you the consumption you're supposed to get with the way you drive so it's not horrible at all so all in all where do I rate this car? Uh, the BMW gentleman actually asked me uh, what rating would I give it and I said 9 out of 10 because the only thing, the only quirk that I had with this car was the sound system otherwise I'm not looking for too much in a car of this value um, of the segment that it's in it does everything well 
it's not cutting corners anywhere but the sound system maybe i should just stop complaining because i feel like i'm complaining too much at this point but yeah the sound system guys that's the only thing that's the only thing otherwise thank you for jumping in i hope this was an insightful review into this car um it's a very good car guys i would i would buy it i'm just not in the market for suvs at the moment but i would buy this car if i was looking to you know have a roomy car that i need for my non-existent family um yeah the bump that i just went over now it's worse it could have been worse but i'm in a very nice car can I park using only this thing or should I just play it safe and not play dumb? I think I can. <laughs>